All right, well, welcome back uh, to the channel. This is um, an episode of A Nugget from Scripture. Um, that hum you hear in the background, that's my air conditioner. I'm sure air conditioners are humming all across the country uh, this past week and for the next week. It's extremely hot here in central New Mexico. We've been in the mid to upper 90s, even hit 100 here in uh, central New Mexico up at uh, 60, 6,300 feet in elevation we're at. We still hit 100 degrees yesterday. Um, it's hot. It's hot out there. And if I waited for it to be quiet, I'd never get anything recorded. But anyway, welcome back. I know it's been a couple of weeks. Um, I will have One Step to Freedom out tomorrow. Uh, I haven't had it the last couple of weeks because I actually went on vacation. Uh, last Sunday I spent driving and then just I haven't had time to record it. Um, and I haven't recorded these in, in a while either. I just haven't had a lot of time, um, especially with work. So we're going to get to it. Um, this is just uh, the nugget from Scripture. This is where I share, uh, you know, something that stuck out to me either you know in a, in a devotional book you know in my uh, in my Oswald Chambers utmost book or uh, something I did in my in my daily devotional in my Bible reading um, or something we went over at church something like that um, and it stuck out to me and so I, I'm sharing it with you just to you know try to share the gospel share God's word to people um, so where I'm at today uh, and this is something actually we talked about it was three weeks ago in church um, I'm reading today to get caught up because I missed the last couple of weeks. Uh, I just want to stay and be prepared for tomorrow, um, you know, get my mind and my heart prepared. So I read uh, all of chapter 12, even though we had already gone over this three weeks ago when I was here. And, uh, you know, I read 13 to make sure I have good context. And I don't know how far we're going to get to tomorrow. I don't even know really where we're at. Um, the, the church app videos don't show the exact scripture that we went to last week, although the week before we made it to verse 19 of chapter 12. So we could be up into chapter 13. I don't know. Um, I don't know where we're at. But anyway, going through reading and get the context of this, something, something you know, just kind of stuck out to me. And it's, I don't know, again, it's one of those things that's been, um, it's been, you know, I've thought about it, been brought up several times over the last several weeks. Um, and so today we're going to be in uh, chapter 12, verses 9 through 11. Um, and this is after... Lazarus' death. And then this is speaking specifically about the Jews wanting to kill Lazarus. So not only do they want to kill Jesus, they want to kill Lazarus, who was just risen from the dead. Now it says in verse 9, Now a great many of the Jews knew that he was there, he referring to Jesus, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might also see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. They're, they're not even necessarily there because, you know, Jesus is the Christ. They're there because of the miracles and like, wow, this guy was dead. Now he's alive. Oh my, oh my goodness. Holy smokes. This is so amazing. Um, they're not there for Christ or any of this other stuff. They're there uh, to, they're there for the miracles. You know, Jesus showed them many miracles and they, they kept saying, well, just show us a sign. Just show us a sign. And in fact, if we get over to, um, let's see, uh, verse 37, uh, it says, and this is after Jesus predicts his death on the cross, which starts in verse 27 and 37, it says, but although he had done so many signs before them, they did not believe him. No one has ever done this before. No one has ever been able to raise someone from the dead, which by the way, Razor, uh, Lazarus was not resurrected. He was just raised from the dead. He was going to die another physical death. Um, he came out, somebody had to move the stone and he still came out in his grave clothes. Uh, Jesus was resurrected. Jesus is the only one that's been resurrected. Um, he came out of the grave without the stone being moved, and his grave clothes were still in the stone. He came out in his new glorified body. The, the body of the flesh died. The glorified body lives. That was the resurrection. We will all have that resurrection when we have our glorified body. Lazarus was not resurrected. It was, um, he was just raised from the dead. He was revived, reanimated, whatever, you wanna, whatever term you want to put on that. Now, anyway, um, so it says, uh, now a great many of the Jews knew that he was there, and they came out for uh, not not for Jesus' sake only, not because of Jesus only, but that they might also see Lazarus, whom he raised from the dead. The chief priests plotted to put Lazarus to death also, because on account of him, many of the Jews went away and believed. So, um, let's talk about religion. First of all, Christianity is not a religion, it's a relationship. Uh, and many people will say that, well, no, it's okay because Christianity still is a religion because you believe in, in a God. No, I believe in the God. Every other religion believes in a God, and Christianity is the only quote-unquote religion, um, which, I, like I said, I don't, I don't call it a, a religion. Uh, it's the only religion 
with a God that actually lives and is based off of faith instead of works. Now, here's the thing, and this is, an, this is one of the main points that I believe that Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is God reaching to man. Okay, God sends his son uh, to the earth, Jesus, to die on the cross, to sanctify us for our sins, to pay for our sins, past, present, and future. He died for the sins of the whole world. This doesn't mean that he died for everybody and that everybody's going to heaven. He did die for everybody, but you must accept him. You must go to the Father through him. He makes that very clear in the scripture. You have to have salvation. You have to have faith in the resurrection. Um, but God sent his son. God is reaching out to man. God sent his son to earth in human form. Uh, he was born of a, a virgin, not that he just miraculously appeared one day. Ta-da! Here's Jesus on the face of the planet. He didn't send him, him down as some other religions believe that it happened. Um, God sent his son to the earth uh, in the form of a human through the Immaculate Conception, through the virgin birth of Mary. He walked the face of the planet, died on a cross, and rose again from the grave. Okay, that is Christianity. Religion is how can I re reach God? How can I do enough good things in my life to somehow reach God? Well, the scripture makes it very clear in Isaiah that there is none good. No, not one. All of our works are like filthy rags. And I mean, think about menstrual rags. Um, that's pretty disgusting. That's what our good works are to God is, is, is like menstrual rags. That is the literal definition of it. That's, I'm not making that up. You can go look it up in the Strong's. Go look it up in Isaiah. Um, that is what it says. But religion is man trying to reach God. Man is, or uh, Christianity is God reaching down. So um, getting back to the topic here, even though I think that that is important, look at what religion does. Okay, the difference between religion and Christianity uh, Jesus did a great thing here by bringing Lazarus back from the dead. Like probably one of the most, um, uh, I can't think of the word, but one of the, one of the most, one of the miracles that stands out the most, I cannot think of the word that I'm, I'm um, that I want to use to make it sound good. It, it, the raising of Lazarus from the dead has to be the miracle that stood out the most. Okay. Yeah. So they're all amazing in my eyes. A lame man walks, blind men see. Um, you know, people have been healed that have been uh, sick for their whole entire lives, had these ailments, lepers healed, all of these diseases and, and afflictions that there's no hope for at all, not in, you know, human terms. There's nothing that we can do for these things. Uh, God or Jesus has healed these people. All amazing to me, but to make it even better, to put the, the cherry on top, the icing on the cake, if you will, he raises someone from the dead. Okay, uh, and not just someone that was from the dead, not someone that died yesterday. This man, Lazarus, was dead for four days, and Jesus wanted to make sure that he was good and dead. He already knew that he was going to die. He already knew that he was going to die, and that's why he stayed. Um, that's why he stayed longer uh, before he went to go to go see Lazarus. Just like he already knew it was going to happen. He knew that he was going to go and raise him from the dead. But if we go back over, uh, uh, go back a few verses, back over into. Um, Chapter 11, verse 39, Jesus said, Take away the stone, Martha, the sister of him, uh, Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there's a stench, for he has been dead for four days. Four days. So the man is dead. He's really good and dead. I mean, he's starting to stink. He's starting to decompose. God brings him, or Jesus brings him back to life. Just as good as can be. <laughs> now, like he was already in paradise. Now, uh, they're trying to kill him again. They want to kill him again. Why? Because he is bringing people to christianity this is what religion does okay nowhere in the history of christianity have christians gone out and sought to kill people who don't believe in god the christians have never gone out and sought to kill people who go from their faith who walk away from christianity they have never sought to kill people who believe in a different way to god through enlightenment or good works. Now we just share the truth. The truth is what is written in this book, okay? The truth is what is in there. People don't like the truth because then it makes you be accountable for the things that you do in your life. Other religions, they just tell you, no, it's okay, just be a good person. You're not gonna have to be held accountable in the end if your good works outweigh the bad things that you do and you know, you've never, never killed somebody, right? So you're a pretty good person. You've never robbed a bank, so you're a pretty good person. Um, but that's what religion says, okay? And, I'm sorry. Uh, 
Yeah, no, that's what religion says. Religion says that these things will get you to heaven. The Bible says there's only one way to heaven. There's only one way to God, and that is Jesus Christ, uh, not your good works. And again, we have never gone out and killed someone because they don't follow what we say. Now, uh, other, other religions have murdered Christians over the years because they don't believe what the religion that you know this other what what this other religion belongs to they put christians in prison when was the last time you heard about a um i don't know when was the last time you heard about a jew um oh well that maybe that's not a good when was the last time you heard about a buddhist when was the last time you heard about a, a buddhist being put in jail uh or prison in another country because he was talking about buddha and enlightenment enlightenment and um you know whatever it is that buddhists believe in or hindus or hindus um muslims will murder their own people if they it's punishable by death to leave the muslim faith and come to christianity that they, they will kill you for that um if you decide that you don't want to be a christian anymore i'm not going to kill you for that the the religious people are against christianity remember it's religious people here where i'm going with this is religious people here in John chapter 12, verses 9 through 11. It's religious people here that want to kill Lazarus again because he's bringing people to Jesus because people are like, wow, Jesus Jesus is the way. They, he did this. He raised Lazarus. And so people are being drawn to Jesus and away from the Jews, away from uh, the Jews being the, uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Uh, they're drawing people away from the Jewish leaders, from the recognition that the Jewish leaders want you're drawing those people away towards Jesus, and they don't like it, and they want to put him to death. It's religious people that try to follow, and I'm not saying don't follow this word, but try to follow it in works, trying to bring recognition to themselves that killed Jesus and put him on the cross. Jesus claimed multiple times. That's going to be a video for another day when, you know, the argument that, well, Jesus never claimed to be God. You, you know, okay, well, he never came out and said the words, I am God, but there are many, 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 many spots that he did say, I am and the only reason that the Jews would have wanted to kill him was because he was claiming to be God. They very much understood what he was saying. Religious people want the glory for themselves. They don't want you to find and know the true way. Christianity has never gone out of their way to kill people because of their belief or their lack of faith. Other religions, they will do everything that they can to persecute Christians. That is what religion does to Christianity. Christians are the one that go to prison in other countries, not in America. That's probably very soon going to be a thing. Uh, but Christians are the ones that go to prison for telling people about Jesus and giving them Bibles. Christians are the ones that get murdered for talking about Jesus. Look at the old, or the, I'm sorry, the New Testament. Look at the martyrs. People didn't just die for something that they knew was good or knew was right. Or something, I'm sorry, something that they had make-believe. It was something that they knew was right. It, w it wasn't make-believe. It wasn't made up in their head. You don't die for a lie. You die for something that you know is true when it comes to that. You're not, I'm not going to go die because of something that I don't actually believe to be true. I'm going to die for what I truly believe to be true. Christians were murdered. Paul, when he was still Saul of Tarsus, before he had his conversion and became Paul... Saul was murdering Christians because of their beliefs. He was a religious leader. He was a Pharisee. He was even called the Pharisee of Pharisees. He knew the law, and he was putting Christians to death for sharing the, the news of the resurrection, for sharing the gospel the way that Jesus had intended the gospel to be shared, which is the, the news of good life. I'm sorry, the good news of uh, eternal life um, through the blood of the cross, through that sanctification. By faith, we can be saved. Paul didn't like that. He was a Pharisee. Look at me. Look at what I know. I know all these rules. I'm better than you. I stand on the street corner and pray. Um, it's all about pride. It's all about me, 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 selfishness, which, by the way, is where uh, all sin comes from. It's all from pride. Every single sin in the, in the world is from pride. Um, but Paul, killing Christians, converted, then he died a martyr's death, death for sharing uh, Christianity. For sharing the good news. That's the gospel. The gospel is good news. The good news of the death and resurrection. Without the resurrection, we have nothing. Without the resurrection, it's all gone. 
None of it matters. That is the key to Christianity is the resurrection because there's no works that can get us into heaven. And without the resurrection, we cannot ever have atonement for our sins. We don't offer sacrifices anymore. That was the way to um, atone for your sins in the Old Testament. Well, we don't do that anymore. And Jesus took the new covenant. He became, uh, he became sin for us on that cross. He was the lamb that was slain. We don't offer sacrifices anymore. So, and the, and the sacrifices, by the way, were only meant for the Jews. Those were rules that were given only to the Jewish people. There is no hope then for anyone without the resurrection. Okay, that is what Christianity stands on. But again, continuing on, Paul died a martyr's death for teaching the resurrection of the cross, for sharing the gospel and the good news. Um, John the Baptist was one that died. There are many, uh, Stephen was a martyr. Stephen was the first martyr, at least the first martyr recorded in the Bible. Um, these people were dying for what they were, what they knew to be true. Not something that was made up, not something that was make believe that they just came up with in their head. They were dying by religious leaders. They were being killed by religious leaders because of their belief and their faith, because it was taking the spotlight off of the religious leaders. And we can follow this all the way through the last 2000 years. The reason that we have the Bible in English, we can think to uh, the reformers, to William Tyndale, to Martin Luther, all of the other, uh, the other people that were involved in the Reformation. They, many of them died, were burned at the stake um, for trying to translate the Bible from Latin into English, okay? Religious people, the Catholic Church, had the Bible in Latin. The people of the land didn't read Latin, so the Catholic Church said, I said it's what it says, so you must follow me and believe me. <clears throat> I am the authority. God is the authority. God's word is the authority. And when you're using the word like that, you are not under God. <clears throat> Excuse me. You do not have the authority of God at that point. They were using it to rule over the people. How dare you try to take this and give it to the common people, putting it into English. That's where we got our King James Version from. Translation from Latin into English and people died for that. Christians died for that and they were killed by religious people. Religion is what kills. Follow me or I kill you. Christianity has never been about follow me or I kill you. If you I'm, nobody's ever said you got to follow me anyway. You follow Jesus. You follow God. You follow what his word says. You follow the commandments of his book. What I say essentially is irrelevant. I am uh, doing my best to, uh, to share the gospel, to rightly divide the word of truth and share the gospel with you, to help teach and to help educate people. Now follow me. Hey, if you, you want to hit the, the follow button on here to get more good uh, videos, that's great. But don't follow me. Follow God. That is the person that we need to follow. Not the Pope, not your pastor, not any other religious leader in the world, not any religion, not any group of people. Okay, well, Christianity is a group of people. Christianity may be a group of people, but it's a group of brothers and sisters, and they don't ask you to follow them. You don't have to follow your pastor. You don't put your pastor on a pedestal. You don't put the Pope on a pedestal, because guess what? They were all born in sin, just like you and me. And being born in sin, we all deserve death. That is the punishment for sin is death. Some of us just have been, had our sins atoned for by the one that we should be following, by Jesus, the blood of the cross. <coughs> I said, I just, this stuck out to me. It's interesting. Lazarus had already died. They brought him back for the dead. And now they want to kill him again. I mean, if I was Lazarus, I'd be like, go ahead, bro. Take me. I already saw paradise. I want to go home. Send me back. I don't want to be in this stupid earth anymore with all this stupid death and, you know, stupid sin. I don't want this. I want to go back to my glorified body. I want to be with the Father in heaven. That's, I mean, I, I, at least I think that's how I would react about this. I mean, could you imagine, though? Could you imagine being Lazarus? Like, I just got raised from the dead. And you want to kill me again? I'll go ahead and do it. But why do you want to kill me again? What did I do? He did nothing. And they wanted to kill him because of the miracle that Jesus performed to raise him from the dead. And because of that miracle, because of Jesus doing what he was tasked to do, 
people wanted to kill him. And the same religious people want to kill Jesus. And they're going to. Eventually they're going to. It was religion that killed Jesus. Actually, I want to share this real quick. It's uh, something I saw on Facebook. It was a Charles Spurgeon quote. Let me, um, well, let me find it. There it is. It says, many people reject Jesus because of bad spirit experience with religious people. Um, the, the problem with that, well, then this wasn't a Spurgeon quote. I was thinking of another one. Whatever, I saw this one this morning. Uh, this is another problem. People put their faith in people. They put their faith in the religion instead of putting their faith in God. So then they, they walk away. I'm not, I can't be a Christian anymore because they're all hypocrites. And they have a bad experience with a person. Somebody teaches them and leads them the wrong way. Uh, I happen to um, have a relative that is one of those people. Had a bad experience at a church in a Christian school in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, they were very uh, legalistic. King James only. Um, she had a, a New International Version Bible, and they took it. Was a Bible that was given to um, her by our grandparents, by the way. And so when I say that, I guess that just goes ahead and leads it to be my sister. A Bible that was given uh, to her by my grandmother, who is now dead. She died last summer. Almost it was a little over a year ago. Just a few days, uh, five days over a year ago from now. My grandmother is dead. They took a Bible that my grandmother had given her and threw it across the room because they said it was trash, because it was an NIV and it wasn't a King James only. That's religion. That is what religion gets you. That is not Christianity at all. That is not biblical. That is not godly. That is religion. That is legalism and religion. So back to my quote, many people reject Jesus because of bad experiences with religious people. So you're rejecting Jesus because of something that a human did. You're rejecting the perfect being that died on the cross to atone for our sins because of something that imperfect humans had done. But this is what happens. This is the quote unquote church hurt. Many people reject Jesus because of bad religious, uh, bad experiences with religious people. But here's the thing. Jesus had bad experiences with religious people too. In fact, they killed him. Religious people killed Jesus. They did not want, uh, they did not want people to know the truth. They wanted people to follow them and worship them. The highest form of pride and selfishness. Follow me and do what I say. That is religious people. In fact, they killed him. People will let you down. Jesus won't. Jesus' promises are true. They have been true from the beginning. They have been true. His promises have always been true. So, Christianity is not a religion. Religions kill people. Religions are legalistic. And they don't bring you to Jesus. They don't, they don't take you to God. They might take you to a God. And it might be a God as you understand him. The problem with it is that becomes then an idol. Because it's what you want God to be. It's a picture of what you want God to be. It's the image of how you picture God. Well, God can't be this way. Because what? Because you think that he can't be that way? Let me tell you what. The words that are in this book, they don't care about your opinion. God doesn't care about your opinion. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what you want. What God says is true. What God says stands. It doesn't change. If it did, then first, uh, I'm sorry, Titus chapter 1 verse 2, uh, God does not change. Or I'm sorry, God cannot tell a lie. Then that would be a lie and that would be a false verse. That would be a, a, a lie of a verse to have in the Bible that God cannot lie. God does not change. He does not care about your opinion. He doesn't care about society's opinion. He doesn't care what society is doing. I guarantee you right now we're living in Romans 1 where he gave us up to a, debate, a debased mind. Let me go and flip over there real quick and then we're going to end this because we're almost at 25 minutes. But let's go over to Romans chapter 1 and let's look at what, you know, where we're at in society and just kind of how I feel like um, God is looking at at least the United States right now and probably if not the rest of the world. Um... Let's start at verse 18, and I'm going to read really quick from 18 to 32. Romans chapter 1, starting in verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. We hide the truth in unrighteousness. In our wickedness, we suppress what is true, what is right. We suppress God's word. 
Okay, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. God has shown it to them. It's in here. Without this, uh, without God's moral authority, it's just our opinions. And there is no moral authority. There is no morality without God's moral authority. For since the creation of the world, verse 20, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. <coughs> verse 22, Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God, changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made by corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things, idols, idol things. And this is where you get religion. We just, we make idols, we make other things to worship. These are religious things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. That's what religion does. Religion worships the creation instead of the creator. Oh, we're going to we're going to be reincarnate uh reincarnated into some other I don't I don't know how you knew what you were before where you're going to be reincarnated in, but we're worshiping <coughs> we're worshiping the creature. <coughs> I'm sorry, the creature. We're worshiping the creation. We're not worshiping God. We're worshiping man and the things that man says are out there. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. 26. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. <laughs> that sounds about like where we're at today. Likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust for one another. Sounds pretty familiar. It's all over the news. It's in our schools getting shoved down our kids' throats. Men with men. Hmm. What is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of the error which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. God gave us up. You do whatever you want. God's walked away from our society. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetous, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. Verse 31, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. And verse 32, who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. And then that's where we find the church today. We find religions. There is religion in so-called Christianity, and it's called the progressive church. That is a religion. You're making God up to be what you want to be. You've read the word. And there are people that, uh, that have read the word, and they know the word. Um, know the righteous judgment of God for the sins that you are committing, the sins that are being committed in this world, and that those who practice such a thing are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Could go on and turn this into a lot more than a 28-minute video based off of my trip to Colorado and some things that I saw at a church that I went to up there, but that'll be another video for another day. Religion changes. Religion doesn't save you. Religion says to worship the creation instead of the creator. It says to follow man and what we say. Men will lie to you. Men will deceive to you. Christianity is not a religion. Religious people chose to choose to kill Jesus and religious people, atheism, agnostics, being part of the religious group, unbelievers in general being part of a religious group, Satanists, that's a religion by the way, Satanists wanting to persecute and kill Christians and Christianity. Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is here trying to help you. Me telling you that something is a sin or something is wrong, that's not hate speech. That's not bullying. That's not me being hateful. That's me seeing that your house is on fire and calling 911 and trying to help you. That's all that is. That's not hateful. Christianity is not hateful. You might say, well, God's hateful, but who are you to judge God, first of all? I mean, just, just who? Who are you to judge God? Christianity is not hateful. Sharing the truth is not hateful. Sharing the lie and dragging people down to hell, making sure they're going to see that judgment seat of, cross, or of Christ where they're going to be judged according to the law. The law condemns. 
So if the law condemns and you're judged according to the law, that just in itself says that you're going to be condemned if you are not in Christ, if you're not being judged for the works that you have done for Christ. There's going to be two different judgments. Don't be judged by the law. Be judged according to the works that you have done, according to the good that you have done, because you're already sanctified. The price has already been paid. Death has already been given for those that are Christians. Share the word faithfully. That is my, that is my call from this. Regardless of any persecution that you might get from other religious groups or... or um, you know, like I said, atheism and agnosticism and, uh, you know, Satanism, those are all religions. They're all man-made religions trying to reach God or to reach something else. All religions that worship the creation and the creature, not the creator. Regardless of what they may do to you as a Christian, continue on, persevere. We know how the story goes. And if you're not a Christian... Just consider these things when it comes to religion. Christianity doesn't go out and try to kill people because you, they don't believe in what you say. Christianity doesn't go out and say, "Well, you don't uh, you don't believe what's in the Bible here. You don't uh, you know you believe in some other book. Time to take you outside and burn you at the stake. Oh, you're trying to put it in another language so you can share the word of God. Let's go out and burn you at the stake. Let's kill you. Take you out back and put a bullet in your head. That is not in the history of ever." been the case when it comes to Christians just trying to share the word. That is love. Trying to share the word is love. To not share the gospel, to not share the truth, that is unloving. Now, we're at 31 minutes. I'm about 15 minutes longer than I like to make these videos, but um, hopefully you were able to get something out of it. One step, um, one step to freedom, new first addiction recovery. I will put that out tomorrow. Um, remember, I have a Zoom meeting on Tuesdays. If you're interested, I'll put I'll put the link to my website down in the description below, www.soberforchrist.com. Um, there's a Zoom meeting uh, for the One Step to Freedom Addiction Recovery Group uh, at 6.30 p.m. Mountain Time um, on Tuesdays. The password and everything will be in the, uh, it's on the website. There's, there's a little picture there. It shows the passcode and the meeting ID and all that. Uh, it's open to anyone. You have questions, feel free to email me, uh, thesoberchristian22 at gmail.com. I'll put that down below in the description as well. If you need help, if you need prayer, if you need help finding a church, um, and you just make sure it's a Bible, Bible teaching and Bible believing church. I will uh, do my best to help you. You can also find information on the Calvary Chapel churches on the website. Um, there's a Calvary Chapel Association church finder on there. There's an AA meeting finder on there. I'm working on putting the curriculum on there for the One Step to Freedom. Um, so that you have something that you can print off and follow along. And... Um, Let's see, let's see what else. Oh, and if you or somebody you know would like to request a Bible, contact me. I will send you a paper Bible free of charge. I have a Bible right here. Uh, this one's a little bit beat up. It sat around in my truck for a little bit, but this is what you get. I have a whole case of these. Um, I will send you a Bible free of charge. I just need to know who to send it to and where to send it. Um, that being said, stay grounded, stay in God's word. Study God's word. Don't just read it. Study it and apply it to your life. Stay grounded, stay in God's blessed. Tomorrow, uh, I'm st sorry, stay grounded, stay in God's word, and stay blessed. Tomorrow, Sunday, there's no excuses. No excuses. Find a church. If you've never been to church, find a Bible believing church, a Bible teaching church. Um, make sure they're teaching the word of God and they're not varying from it because otherwise it's just becoming a religion. And that part of Christianity is becoming a religion. Following God's word is Christianity. We're Christ people. If you're not following God's word, we're not Christ people. Tomorrow, find a church. If you need help finding a church, I will help you find a church. Somebody will help you find a church. Don't hesitate to reach out and contact us. Until then, again, stay grounded, stay in God's word, and have a blessed day.